If you look at a lot of charts, and this is kind of where you're gonna get the biggest bang for you. You're never gonna get the biggest bang for your buck from, from the up, you know, from the three, four week run. You're always gonna get your biggest bang for your buck. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Again, hopefully everybody had a great weekend, long extended weekend, great food, a lot of rest, a lot of sun, and you know, now we got back to work. So, you know, let's talk about the market. So last week, the same thing, sellers, sellers, sellers. You had one rally to kind of tip, give you a tap off or your hat off, uh, tip your hat off, long day. Uh, but anyway, going into today's session, you're like, well, again, the same scenario is going to play out. You, you, any type of strength is probably going to get sold in the morning, and you're probably going to go back to the regular schedule program. And then next thing you know, at some point during the week, they're going to give kind of a, you know, here you go, rally for one day and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And when you looked at the futures last night, you looked at the futures and you said, all right, you know, 1%, you know, you had a 1% move. Uh, overnight, uh, last night they were trading, um, and you said they said, "Well, maybe they start building off of the like the Friday rally we had, right? Maybe no, right? And ne and you never know, right? You never know, never know." But slowly but surely, the market played out in the morning, and then overnight futures were up one percent. You woke up this morning, six thirty, seven o'clock Eastern time, and you're like, "Well, Nasdaq futures down a hundred, uh, the Dow futures are down three hundred. Jesus, here we go again. Sorry, I, I apologize. I know some people." Uh, are, are get very very emotional and use sometimes God's name in vain. I apologize ahead of time. It slipped. I'm a Neanderthal. There's nothing I can do. So I apologize ahead of time. Anyway, so the market started playing out a way this way. Again, we didn't really know what to expect. The day after uh, a long holiday, you know, were people still taking off? Were people waking up this morning? Go, my goodness! I can't believe what's going on with this market. Can the market just get one damn uh, uptick? Anything? Anything? Give us anything? A, a, a crumb? And it didn't, right? It didn't. If you look at the action this morning uh, at the open, you had uh, energy prices, right? Fuel energy prices getting hit. So all these energy names uh, got hit and you started seeing yourself one by one, all these NASDAQ names started coming back, you know, coming back down. And you said to yourself, well, you know, if you're a bull again, what can you do? It's just, you know, there's nothing you could do. The market's just absolutely awful on the long side. Let's sit it out, right? Let's sit it out. But the bear case, you turn around and say, well, this is a trader's market. Let's see what happens. And, you know, when you start looking at the day, it really, you know, you got you got to give the bulls a lot of credit, right? And it, you know, the way we started the day was, you know, I started looking at, sh at shorts, right? They were all shorts. And again, some crazy reversals. But, you, you know, you had some pretty good shorts here at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day. And all we kept on saying was, and this is kind of my, my motto, all you need is one, right? If you catch two, three in the day, four in the day, whatever the case may be, but all it takes is one because one beta name, like a Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, Google, right? Is the equivalent of like 30 regular stocks because they have such a massive average shoe range. And, you know, things started really well. I mean, really, really well at the day. Uh, Tesla 66, 666, uh, AKA, okay. Too much information, but you could read it for yourself. I won't say it out loud. Uh, if builds below can flush, last week's low was 656, big level as well. And the day started out great. It really, really started out great. It really did. I was, you know, I think all of us, I don't think anybody here uh, could turn around and say, you know, it was awful to start of the day. So here is the whole channel here. Uh, 666 low, 66 low, 666 low. So it breaks 66 and just starts getting just absolutely annihilated and takes out 66, takes out 56. And I said, hey, there's a shot. It gets down to, to 641. Just again, make sure you take money along the way. Use break even as you stop. There's a shot it gets to 41. It gets down to 48, but you know, stops everybody out, break even on the balance. But hey, how could anybody complain, right? 66 to 48, I mean, it's, it's great. It's all good. And you turn around and you're like, well, and then you start talking one by one by one. CLVS for small cap lovers, 295. If it starts to build, maybe it could go higher. It obviously got nowhere there. Uh, Google was was really good. There was no liquidity. I didn't get any myself. There was just literally no liquidity. Google went down from 2134 held twice to about 2114. Sounds good, right? Sounds good. It was a, there was just no liquidity. There was literally no liquidity on that move. And if you got it, 
Uh, congratulations. I personally did not get it. And boy, oh boy, talk about not shorting into a rally. You know, Google 120 points off the low is just a massive move. Uh, Lulu never gave a second entry. I was watching it. Another thin name. Uh, 261 only went down to the 258. Rivian, two, uh, what the hell did Rivian do? 2483. I didn't trade Rivian today. 2483 if it builds below can bring in more sellers. What the hell did Rivian do today? 2483 got down to where? 24, not nothing. You know, only, only went down about 40 cents and then reversed. But but to, to the bull's credit, and that's the most important part, to, to the bull's credit, not only did these stocks start, you know, getting a firm bid mid-morning, they started taking out the previous day's range, which was very, very important. And as we always discuss, and I, and I talk about, I've been talking about now uh, for the last six months, again, even though we're still in a bear market, and again, I don't care what you say it is, I don't care what you call it, we all know what this is, right? We've seen plenty of times you are going to see pretty good strength, maybe sometimes multiple week strength, maybe sometimes multiple day strength, maybe sometimes multiple interval strength, but you will see strength coming into a bear market. The question is always, how long does it last? And here is a scenario that we saw a couple of times. This is kind of our reference point, a little bit of a segue, what possibly could happen tomorrow. Here's where we, we reclaimed the 20 day moving average, went sideways twice and then lost and had a nasty sell off. Here's we reclaimed the 20 day moving average, went up two days, lost the 20 day moving average, had a nasty three day fall. Here we are again, right? Here we go again, As, like, like Yogi Berra says, uh, here's deja vu all over again. Here we're back to the 20 day moving average again. And the last three times that we reclaimed the 20 day moving average, we at least went on multiple day runs. Here's a run that we had for three weeks. Here's the run that we had for about three days and went sideways and died. Here's a run, unfortunately, we only had a couple of days, but the point is that 20 day is that intermediate supply that if the bulls can reclaim, there could be actually a tradable, tradable interval for us to the long side. And that's kind of where we are today. And when you look at, you know, just the remainder of the pivots, and let's just go quickly through them. Uh, Cure, huge move, uh, 19 and a quarter, great job by Ivan. Uh, 19 and a quarter, 20 big spots, needs to confirm, here is Cure. All, you just started seeing strength come on the board one by one by one. So here is the 19 and a quarter right here. Here is the 20, and Cure went right to 21, big move there. Uh, NVAX, 57, 55, needs to build. Here was NVAX. I think we talked about NVAX on the weekend video. I could be wrong. Such a long day. But NVAX had uh, NVAX had a pretty big move. It came out of this 57.55 and traded all the way up to 64.5. Big move here. Listen, NVAX confirms if the market does run in the next couple of days. Hey, why can't this thing go up to 68? Big, big move there on NVAX. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, and here, here's the whole point. This was the first point of the day. Awesome. Keep a runner. Potential move to 640. You got the 648. And completely re reverse course. Uh, SRE for small cap lovers. I still really, really like this. Uh, guys, for all you guys who trade small caps, keep an eye on this. Uh, SRE uh, for small cap lovers, 250 needs to build. Not a big move yet, right? Not a big move yet, but look at this chart, right? Look at this move chart. So it took out the 650, closed right at the highs of the day. If this thing starts building above this like 260 area, you might have a shot at three bucks. Keep an eye on this thing for the next. A uh, couple of days, but you started seeing things waking up like Microsoft, like Amazon, like NVIDIA, one by one by one. Microsoft, again, here's a perfect example, 259.82, uh, 260 if it builds above, it needs to build, right? So here's Microsoft, uh, really took off, and there's a here's the 260 right here, right? Really took off, I think there's a shot at 265 tomorrow at Microsoft. But the point is you started seeing everything being pulled up, even Tesla, right? That They came out with that, you know, came out with that, uh, I guess, news uh, over the weekend that I guess the deliveries were great and there's some, who, who cares, right? Who cares? Most important part is it went down on the downside, right? Took out the previous channel low, but now what it did was it fought all the way back and took out one, two, three, four days, right? Four days worth of selling on this PR. And if it could reclaim the 20 day, right? Last time we reclaimed the 20 day, the stock went on a 60 point run. I'm just saying, I'm not saying, just I'm just saying. So going into tomorrow, I think the bulls, if if they can if they can confirm today's channels, and again, granted, we're still in a bear market. Believe me, I'm very, very conscious of that. I think everybody who trades, 
in the webinar are conscious of that. But we kind of started talking about it towards the afternoon. I mean, we saw really good bullish action. And, and if you look at a lot of charts, and this is kind of where you're going to get the biggest bang for you. You're never going to get the biggest bang for your buck from, from the up, you know, from the three, four week run. You're always going to get your biggest bang for your buck off the bottom coming out of channels. And when you look at, when you do your research tonight and you start looking at charts, you'll notice the same chart popping up over and over and over again. So the question is going into tomorrow is, can we confirm, right? Can we confirm back the 20 day moving average? Because if we could, I mean, look, and if you believe in the theory, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, the next supply zone is nearly 294. You're talking about what? You're talking about eight points, right? That's a lot, man. So, you know, we're set up here. The, the only thing the bulls need to do now is literally execute. Don't drop the ball, right? Do not drop the ball. I think the bears are giving you some life. That's giving you some a little bit of, of leeway, man. Take advantage. Don't mess this up. Don't gap and crap. We don't want to come back and lose three days worth of three days worth of, uh, of selling action, which you just engulfed today, right? This is a big engulfing candle. And when you look at the scoreboard, the scoreboard's not going to paint the picture. The Dow was down 200 points. The Nasdaq was up 200 points. It's not a mixed market. The market was strong today. The Dow was only 30 stocks. The market was strong. The Nasdaq was strong. The leaders were strong. The speculation money was strong. All the darlings were strong. The key is, can you live with prosperity, right? Can you go for another day? Can you do it again? And that's what she said. So let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. And guys, anything coming off the bottom looks good. Anything coming off the bottom that is that that touched today, either the 5, 10, 20 day moving average, that's the charts they need to reclaim. Like look at names. Let me give you guys a couple of names. Look at names like Snow, right? All these cloud stocks. If Snow confirms this upper channel here, this thing could wake up. Look at Net, another cloud name, right? Same thing here. If this thing could start getting above this channel, can wake up. Look at a name, for example, RBLX went bananas right? When absolutely bananas day. This was one of the very first ones that really started the stretch. If it starts confirming a channel, maybe it goes to 42, 43. Look at a name like Etsy. Etsy looks magnificent. Etsy, look, look, look. Etsy is literally one day away from breaking this massive, massive downtrend that Jews, look, look, look. I mean, look where it started. This, this downtrend started on three, on three, two, of uh, this year, right? January, February, on March, right? So this, look, you see this 50 day moving average? So if this thing confirms this 50 day moving average, it's gonna go higher as well. And obviously every beta stock is on watch. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the names. Look at the charts, Amazon, Nvidia, Tesla, right? They're out there, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta go look for them exactly where the channels are. So that's it, man, that's it. The ball is in the bull's hand. The question is, are they going to run with it or are they gonna drop it once again like they did on so many occasions in the last six months? I would love to see a second day rally into, uh, into tomorrow, but again, it's not what I want, it's what I get. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody's happy, hope everybody's healthy, and hope everybody continues to stay in business. God bless, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.